Hi, thanks for stopping by. I'm Adam, and in today's video, I'm going to be installing RetroPie on my Raspberry Pi. RetroPie enables you to emulate various retro computers and consoles. Specifically, I'm interested in emulating the ZX Spectrum today. And if you'd like to come along and join me in a future video, I'll be looking at comparing this emulated computer against these real Spectrums. Now, this one is a Sinclair ZX Spectrum Plus 48K that I bought back from the dead a few videos ago now. If you'd like to watch that video, you'll see how I did that. And this specific one, whilst it's not an authentic Sinclair uh, ZX Spectrum, this is a replica, it's a clone, and the specific clone that I, I built was the Harlequin 128K. So let's go ahead right now and download the RetroPie software and get it installed on this Raspberry Pi. So you're going to want to come along to retropie.org.uk, come to the Downloads tab, and then depending on the Raspberry Pi that you've got, a Raspberry Pi 1, 2 or 3, you're going to need to download the appropriate file. Now I have a Raspberry Pi 3, don't I baby sloth? Yeah. Yeah, so we, yeah. you don't know, but yeah, so we're going to download that. And whilst that's downloading, um, we can pie. speed this up in post. Speed it up. Speed! Yay, it's downloaded! Right, now that it's downloaded, what can we do? You just said it's downloaded and then you just said it again. <laughs> so I did. Right. So I'm going to bring this in now. Yes. Why do you think I'm going to bring this in? I know. I think you know why. It's this MD5 number down here. So this is a hash or a way of... Hashtag. Hashtag, not a hashtag as such. It's a mathematical sum that's done on the file and it creates this number. Now, I like maths. I like maths too. Quick maths. Anyway. Two plus two is four. That's quick maths. <laughs> but if we do some mathematical equation, the same mathematical equation on the file that we've downloaded, hopefully we get this number. And if we do, we know our file is good and it's not been tampered with. So, enter. Um, enter. Enter. Didn't work. Command. So here we go. We get this number. And five, five six. six, nine, eight, eight, A. Blah, 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 ending in C E A C. So we know. Yay! Yay! We know that that file's good. Now, if I navigate to the location of this file in my downloads folder, so here we see it. Now we've just checked it, we know it's good. It has the extension GZ. Wait a minute, what's GZ? I know. I, I know, I know. You what? I didn't even ask what's GZ. No, I did. <laughs> what's GZ? It's a compressed file. Now, similar to similar to .zip, okay, similar to .zip, but Windows doesn't natively handle it. If I double click it, look, it goes, I don't know what to do. Because I'm not. So, yeah, so how can we open this on a Windows file? Well, you can use something called 7-zip. If you don't want to install 7-zip, okay, you can come along to portableapps.com forward slash apps. <laughs> and you can download 7-zip portable. I have already done this and here it is, 7-zip portable. Um, if I run 7-zip portable now, dum, 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 and here it is. So I'm inside my downloads folder. Yeah. Here I can see the retro pie. Let's pie. Mm, I like pie. Let's extract it. Okay. Okay. Dum -da -dum -da -dum -da -dum. We wait a little bit. Yes. Dum -da -dum -da -dum -da -dum. We wait a little bit more. Yes. And now it is extracted. So I can close 7 zip. I can go back to my main downloads folder. And in this folder, RetroPie is the RetroPie image file. Now this needs to be extracted onto a micro SD card for my Raspberry Pi 3, although it's a full size SD card is for the there? Raspberry Pi 1. Yes, that is it in there. So I've inserted, ooh, ooh I've inserted my micro SD card into my micro SD card reader oh, and I forgot about this. <laughs> it is connected into my PC. So how can I get that onto the SD card? I can't just pop it onto the SD card. No, I need to extract it. But the first thing I need to do is 
format the SD card. <laughs> so let's format the SD card. Okay, so um, SD card. How do we format it? The proper way of doing it really is to get a proper SD card formatter. So you can do this by coming along to sdcard.org forward slash downloads forward slash formatter forward slash index dot HTML and downloading SD card memory formatter for Windows. Okay, I've done that and I have installed it. So let's run it. Here it is. Run, You can run, run, run. Refresh button. So it populates all the drives that are SD cards. Do you want to do it? Okay, there's the mouse. You need to select format. And click yes. By the way, formatting will erase everything on a disk. So please make sure you have backed up anything you may wish to keep on this card before doing that. Have you done that? Did you do that? No. Oh no! No, it was, it was an empty card, it was fine. Click OK. Now you can close that application, baby sloth. Right, the next thing we need to do is we need to extract that image file onto the card. And this can be done with a program called Etcher. Please go to the top tab on the right. Mm. Now, I've already downloaded and installed this. Flash. So we, flash! Ah! <laughs> Savior of the universe. Anyway, so what do we need to do? We need to, if we hadn't already done so, click download, but we've already downloaded it. So that's great. Let's just run this. Let me get, get the Etcher in there. There you go, you can have the mouse back. So we've now got Etcher. Select the image to be written. Okay, select image. Yep. And click in here. We're going to navigate to the location where the file is. Select the image, baby sloth. Why do I have to do it? <laughs> because you wanted to do it. Select it once and click the open button. Open. Okay, so now it's picked up the fact you've only got one SD card. If you've got more than one SD card in an SD card reader in your machine, make sure you select the correct one. And he's desperate to click the flash button. Click it. Ooh, pretty pictures. What's this say? While you're waiting, oh check God. out our featured project. Build your own network-wide ad blocker with Piehole. Maybe we do that in the future. No. No. <laughs> but but I want to see what Piehole is. I don't. I know what my Piehole is. It's in my face and I like to put pie in it. Mmm, pie. Yes. Oh. So maybe we whiz through this with the magic of post. So that is it. I'm so excited, I'm ready to put this in the Raspberry Pi and get setting it up. Are you ready? Are you ready, Harrison? No. You're not ready? No. You're not excited? No. Really? Oh, well, I think you better say you are. Are you excited, Harrison? No. <laughs> well, I am, so we're going to do this right now. So with the micro SD card inserted, we power on the Raspberry Pi. And we wait while it boots into RetroPy Emulation Station. Once in Emulation Station, we can set up the gamepad. To do this, I'll need to press and hold a key on my gamepad until it's detected. And then I just press the appropriate button on the gamepad. When I get to the buttons that don't exist on my gamepad, I, I don't have a left thumb and a right thumb and blah de blah de blah I just simply press and hold a button that I've already assigned until it says not defined. Once in RetroPie, the first thing I'm going to want to do is go down to RetroPie Setup. Then we're going to want to manage packages and select manage optional packages. I'm just going to simply select install or update all packages from binary. If you only want to update or install a specific machine, for example, the ZX Spectrum, then you could go ahead and do this. Now that actually took about 20 minutes in real life. I sped it up through the magic of post. Okay, once you've done the update, you'll need to perform a reboot of your machine. Again, that was somewhat sped up. 
So once the Raspberry Pi has booted into the emulation station, we're going to want to get some gains uh, or some ROMs for some of the machines onto the device. We can do this across the network. To do this, simply open up Windows File Explorer and enter backslash backslash RetroPi into the address bar. To log in when prompted, the default username is Pi and the default password is Raspberry. And that's all lowercase. Once you've accessed the network share of the Pi, you're going to want to head along to the ROMs folder. In here, you'll see various machine names that you'll recognize. Now, in this case, I'm going to head down to the ZX Spectrum. And I'm simply going to drag in a tap file, which we can run and have a look at. Okay, once copied, before we can actually access this, Within the Emulation Station application, we'll need to reboot Emulation Station. So let's head down to Quit, select Restart Emulation Station, select Yes, and wait for it to restart. Once restarted, I can head on to the Sinclair ZX Spectrum and select the demo. Sit back and enjoy.